In this video, I'll be going over a brand new feature in Unreal Engine 5.5 called Elevation ISO Lines. This feature or node has been added to the PCG system, which allows you to scatter objects over different elevation steps of your terrain. This node will produce lines that follow your terrain curvature along different height steps, and it can be useful to scatter objects on edges or lips of your terrain, like cliffs or rocks or trees on the edges of certain elevation heights or slopes. To begin, you'll want to go to Edit, Plugins, and make sure that you have the Procedural Content Generation Framework plugins loaded. Once you've confirmed that, you can go to Add, Volumes, and we'll create a brand new PCG volume. We'll reset the PCG volume location to the center of the world, and we'll want to make sure this PCG volume contains or surrounds the part of the landscape you want to affect. So I'll just put it over the whole landscape in this case, but you can limit it to specific areas if needed. Next, we'll right click in our content browser, go to PCG and create a PCG graph. I'll call it PCG underscore isolines for now. And I'll open up that graph and we'll start creating our PCG graph. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is create a get landscape node so we can get the landscape's information. Once we have the get landscape node, we can connect that up to an elevation ISO lines node, which is a new node in Unreal 5.5. After we have that, we're going to create one more node called a static mesh spawner to spawn meshes along the terrain where these elevation ISO lines are. And we'll connect all these up like this. Now for our static mesh spawner, we'll have to add an object or some sort of item. So under the mesh entries here, I'll add a new mesh entry and I'll just choose something as a default for now, just something to view what's happening. So I'm just going to add a cube and maybe I'll just use the default SM underscore chamfer cube. Once I've selected that, I'll click save on our PCG graph. I'll minimize it. I'll go to our PCG volume that I can find in my outliner that we added that is surrounding this whole landscape right now. And I'll go to the PCG component and I'll drag and drop my PCG graph into the graph here. And then I'll click generate and it will generate those cubes or items along the train. If you do this over a large part of your train, it may take a while to generate. So you might want to start with only a small area. And then once you figure out your settings, start to expand your PCG volume. Now, if I start to zoom in, one thing that you'll notice is we have all these elevation ISO lines now. All these lines of those geometries being drawn along the elevation paths of our terrain. And you'll notice they chop off at a certain height right now, and they're very dense, and they follow every twist and turn. And these are some things that we can adjust. If I open up the PCG ISO lines graph, or PCG graph that we made, on the elevation ISO lines node, there's quite a few settings. The most important one is going to be the resolution. Right now, this took quite a while to generate. It's scattering a lot of these boxes. The resolution you can think of as accuracy. The higher the resolution, the bigger chunk of landscape it evaluates at one time. So you can think of that resolution as the accuracy of where it places each box or each object or point. So right now, every hundred units is kind of being used as the minimum size of accuracy. So if I push that resolution up to something like maybe 500 or something like 1500, then we get less boxes and it's evaluating a larger chunk of landscape to place the point. And this will be much quicker, but the problem is everything becomes much more thinned out. And we'll deal with that in a moment. But the next thing I'm going to do is increase the elevation end so it can scatter these lines up higher on my terrain. So maybe I'll make the elevation end something like 5,000. And then the elevation increment is a distance between each elevation line it draws on the terrain. So maybe 100 is too low. Maybe I'll make that something like 500. So less lines drawn over the terrain only every 500 units in height 
will it draw a new elevation ISO line? But you could see everything becomes very thinned out right now. So what I'm going to do is on this elevation ISO lines node, I'm going to check on output as spline. And then we'll get a nice densely populated line that follows the terrain. And we can control the spacing as shown with the elevation increment. We can control the start and end height with the elevation start and end. But the problem now with the higher resolution is that it doesn't really snap to the terrain anymore that well. If I look at certain areas where there's maybe a steeper slope or something, we start to notice that some of these curves or lines are floating in a lot of areas. So that becomes a little bit of a problem. And there's a way that we can fix this problem as well. And maybe I'll change this just so we could start to see that problem uh, much more noticeably. I'll change my resolution to 2500 and we'll go to a steep area here. And you can see that some of them are going through the ground, above the ground. It's not really following the ground anymore. To fix that, it's actually a very easy solution. What we'll end up doing is taking our elevation ISO lines, and before we go to our static mesh spawner, we'll add a projection node. And we'll connect our elevation ISO lines into this projection node. The projection target will be our landscape data node, and our output will be our static mesh spawner. And by doing that, it will project those points to snap to the terrain. So when I look at these points now, they no longer go underneath the terrain. They no longer go above the terrain. They're snapping pretty much exactly to the terrain's surface. So now we no longer have these ISO lines going through or below the terrain. Maybe next we only want to have these ISO lines generate points on only certain steepness of slope. And to do that, it's actually quite easy. What we can do is after our projection node here, we can make a little bit of room and I will add a normal to density node. That will take the normal of the train or the object being placed on the train and change that normal value into a density value, which we can then filter and clip away from or adjust what range could be displayed. So by doing this normal to density node, I can extract information from the normal of the surface. So I'll first do normal to density, then I'll do a density filter node, and I'll connect that up, and then go into the static mesh spawner. And you won't notice anything changing right away, but if I go to the normal to density node and I change the strength to 0.1 to make a larger difference uh, for the different slopes or angles, then you'll start to see some points disappear in some areas. But we can more kind of control that with our density filter by specifying a lower bound and upper bound and kind of clip away from areas. And now what I can end up with is only have points scattered with these ISO lines on areas that are more flat. Or I could take this density filter and invert it and have it only generate points on areas that are more steep. And again, I can play with the lower bound here to kind of clip away. And you can see how these points are now being placed only on certain slopes or angles. So that can be very useful to scatter different things on different parts, more flat areas or more sloped and steep areas. But scattering things as a line like this doesn't seem very natural. It's very artificial feeling. So what we're gonna do next is go to a part of our graph before we do the projection so I'll make some room here, and we're gonna add another node, which will just be a very simple transform points node. And we'll connect our elevation ISO lines points up to that, and then we'll connect that into our projection node. And this transforms 
points node will have a minimum offset, maybe negative 250 to positive 250. And that will kind of shake up those points and then project them onto the ground. So it's choosing a random for each point between the offset min and max. And that way we get points kind of more scattered and not just in a perfect line. And you can make this much larger as well. I could do something like negative 500. You could do it in all of them essentially, but you could choose X, Y, or Z. But if I do that now, they're more kind of randomly scattered. So it's not just perfectly straight paths or lines. And you could do the same thing with rotation and scale. If I want to break up the scale, I can make the minimum scale 0.5 maximum scale something like three and then we get a nice variation of scale of scattering along those parts of our terrain so it starts to look a little bit more natural now hopefully by this point you kind of see how this works but you can kind of build upon this once you make this graph you could spawn one type of meshes on more kind of steep areas like this and then spawn a different type of mesh or in this case, I'm just gonna go and change the mesh color or material to show how you could have different types of geometries on different types of areas using the same graph. I could reuse this very same graph, but after normal to density, I could have a different density filter that maybe doesn't do the invert and then spawns a different type of mesh. And then maybe I can adjust that density filter. And what we can end up having is something maybe like this, where you have some type of geometry scattered on more of the isoline areas that are flat, and then a different object scattered on isoline areas that are more steep. And that gives us a very nice breakup over our whole terrain following these different lines of elevation. And maybe you can have these have a little bit more randomized scattering because right now you still kind of see those lines very organized, but this can help build up and scatter certain objects on different parts of your landscape. And the great thing about it is if you modify your landscape, this just adapts to it because it's taking those lines and tracing them along the different elevations throughout your whole terrain. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how to make your terrains look more natural or to scatter tough things along edges or ellipse of your terrain, like rock structures, or certain types of foliage and things that might be generally manually placed, but now could be placed using these elevation isolines. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and check out the Patreon. If you are part of the Patreon, you will get access to the PDF that goes over all the steps you saw in this video in a little bit more detail.